got a Kubi. And it's in that fancy white box. So you just never know what's going on there. Let's get this plastic off of it so we can get in it. And then we'll look at what it is. I think it's, you know, it's got a tag. It should be telling us something. Alright. Yeah, there's a tag. This is a KB299B. Oh, let's focus. 299B. M390 Titanium. Hmm, I'm curious now. M390. Okay. This is... I believe it's a Barracuda. It's got a cl nice cleaning cloth. Big cleaning cloth. Man, let's get it out of this bag. Bag. Sealed hermetically. <laughs> yeah. What's that from? Hermetically sealed. I forget. I think this is a Barracuda. Let's put all this away. I do like the white upgraded boxes, though, because you know something special's in there. Super lightweight, titanium, black titanium, gold anodized hardware. Both sides. All the hardware is gold. Titanium milled pocket clip. Front flipper only. Lost about half of you right there. Oh, come on. I mean, you had me at thwack. Wow. Yeah, not so much that. Definitely could go there. But even this. That's coming out of there with such force. Makes me think I'll, I'll snap the stop pins. <laughs> I mean, that thing. Wow, the leverage that that is popping out of there. Holy schmoly, holy shnikes. Wow. Yeah, so it's only that's the only way in is that front flipper. And if you're not if you're not a flip flipper fan fan, I get it if you rolled already. You're like, yeah, I'm not a front flipper. But if you were thinking about getting one or on the fence, oh man. And if you're down for Small. This is a medium. This would be a small pocket knife. Uh, let's get in this thing. Let's get it apart. We'll check it in. Finish checking it out. Little, what's that? A little teardrop uh, collar. Pretty cool. Different. You know what I mean? Pocket clip's got to come before that body screw. And look at this. I just noticed it. The only hardware that comes through to the other side is the pivot. Everything else is into the scale. I mean, what a cool feature and what an amazing show side that it gives you. Look at the show side of this knife. I mean, I, I, I am such a fan of that type of thing. It's a little extra, but
the uh, screw holding the liner lock into the scale is on the inside and it's milled out into the backspacer here so it can fit in there. It's got a little bit of oily, oily stuff in there. I don't think I'm going to take this off. I think I'm just going to wipe all that down. I'll wipe this down, re-lube these bearings, put all that back together, and uh, call it good. Because the way that that action ran, I don't think I can improve it. I don't know that I want to improve it, because better than that, How would I describe better than that? Um, better than what it is now, it would be more than I deserve. I, I don't think I could function a knife. I know I'm being ridiculous, but golly, that action was so good. I can't wait to flip it again. Yeah, this one, um, y'all know that I'm purging knives and doing that whole thing right now. You know, I, I check a knife in, except for two sons. Um, almost everything else goes immediately into the purge box. I have a box of knives, like a bin. And so I pack them back up into their packaging and I put them in that bin. And then as I'm purging knives, I just reach in there and pull stuff out, you know. Um, this one, uh, pardon me. Um, this one is going, uh, I already know, 100%, it's going in my keep it case. Yeah, I, I mean, this one will have to go on an evaluation as I'm, as I'm culling the herd. You know, it, you start to do, uh, uh, you know how rock stations used to do that? They'd go this or that, this or that, and they'd have, uh, they'd do brackets for rock songs or whatever. And that's kind of how I have to do knives at some point. I have to go, okay, well... Do I keep this one or do I keep that one? And I, I have to choose. Which one am I going to keep? Well, I think this this one would have to go pretty deep before I found a knife that I kept and got rid of this one. I'm not saying there's not a knife that like, would this be the last knife standing? Oh, my allergies are wearing me out, y'all. <coughs> um, would it be the last knife standing? Um, no, I'm not saying that. I mean, come on. Um, but... Would it still be hanging on if I if I called down to a top fifty? Maybe top one hundred. Boy, I don't I don't see how this doesn't make a top one hundred knives in my collection. And I've got a lot of knives, you know what I mean. And and I've got a lot of really good ones, but I already feel like this one this one hangs on deep into the rotation. Small. I think it's going to be capable. I keep putting this bearing on backwards. What is the deal, man? There you go. Um, top 100 pieces. I think it's got a legit shot to make it. It's got an internal stop pin. Catching in the titanium inside here. Both sides. Open and closed. Both scales. It's a pretty stout system. <clears throat> B 
be better if I took that pin out and uh, brought it from brought it from the bottom up, but we'll see. See how much grief it gives me. It's clearly the wrong hole. Yeah, it wasn't bad. These are the same. That must be the pocket clip. These are body screws that go all the way through. Yep, yep, I felt it cinch that down. I'm not a big fan of gold hardware either, but I'll tell you on this knife, I'm, I'm feeling it, I get it. It's kind of an executive level, I mean, Yeah, if I, I mean, if I was going to get a humanitarian war, <laughs> oh, why? Why, bro? I mean, out of nowhere, just level of stupidity. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, if I was at a Black Tux affair or something, I think that's a T9. Uh, where we go? That's a T10 right there. Yeah, it's not a 10. Maybe a 9. I don't know. I know it's tight, so I don't need to bother with it. It's too tight. locked up really well on it now blade centered oh this thing all right let's get through it front flipper only and this thing can't weigh i mean it's under three ounces it's it's feather light this is a small light snappy wonderful piece of titanium and m390 steel i mean the action that detent is really tight on there but it's so small it feels insignificant to my hands I could change it so that it drops better, but it's so snappy coming out that I'm not going to mess with it. I'm going to leave that be because to get it to drop better than that, but lose some of what's going on here with this, I'm, I'm not willing to take that risk. Not that it's a risk. I could put it back, but. But I'm not willing to make that trade. This is this is what I'm looking for right here. And the drop shut, I mean, it's not quite as good as I think it could be, but golly. That that snap out of there. Whew, maybe maybe 
Well, it's definitely within the top five front flippers that I have, in my opinion. How that comes out of there and how forceful and confident that is. Whew. Speaking of confident, how's this grip? Let's. I mean, the action, I'm going to say... So the drop action is probably a B. The opening action is an A+. Plus. So I'll call it an A and cut it down the middle. Yeah, wow. I mean, all right. Ergonomics. <laughs> Man. Every time I do it, it's like amazing. Um... So there's no flipper tab here to hold me in. So just the way that I'll rate a knife, I can't really get over the confident mark because even though I'm really locked in, if I was to go forward with this knife and meet resistance, I'm not confident that I could keep my hand from coming up over that blade. And that's a severe no-no. Um, and you just never know what you're going to run into if you're coming forward with a knife run into a piece of leather I don't know a chunk of bone who knows but if you're coming forward and, and meet resistance and you're not locked in in a confident grip if you come up and over that I mean you're a casualty that's a problem that's a big problem so because of that because it doesn't have a flipper tab I'm going to take it up to the confident line and just let it bounce off of it because oh my goodness am I locked in here the shape of this the way that it's designed, I get all four fingers up on there and just the, the narrowness of it, it, it's perfect for me to hammer my hand around, white knuckle it, just really grip it. And then this jimping on the spine, it's super sharp. So it like when I press into it, there's no going past it. If I'm pressing down, I can't get past that jimping. No way. So, very locked in on this little knife. Very locked in. So much so that, as far as I'm concerned for ergonomics, this knife could function as backup self-defense for me. If this was in my pocket, I wouldn't want it to be my primary self-defense weapon. But if this was in my pocket um, as my backup, I'd, it wouldn't bother me one bit. I mean, I could always come around like this and then cap that off with my thumb and have a bunch of leverage. I'm not a big fan of this right here. And the reason I'm not is because it's almost coming this way, which is working against that lock. You know, as that comes down, you're on a blunt side of the blade, not the sharp side. So it's, it's kind of not cutting and you're pressing against that lock. I'm not a big fan of that because the other thing is, is if that lock gives way, that blade's coming around, look where it's coming. It's coming on my fingers. Yeah, so I'm not a big fan of that. If I'm gonna come down like that, I wanna be like this in a reverse grip because then I'm cutting and I can pull I, much better. Now, can I hold this knife like this? I can. I can actually hold this in a reverse Pakal grip. Yep, I'm shy of this blade here, and I am capped off and locked in. And so, could I go this way with it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I, for me, I, I definitely would be fine with this being backup self-defense. I wouldn't want it to be my only self-defense, but backup, sure. Um, now, I say that. Would I wear this in a pair of shorts or some flip-flops or something? Run into the Dollar General to get me some ice cream? Maybe. You know, possibly. I mean, none of none of these rules are written in stone. They're not on stone tablets on Mount Sinai. You know what I'm saying? Um, where am I going now? Pocket clip. Yeah, ergon or ergonomics. I mean, I yeah, ergonomics are great on this knife. I got lost there. Dementia. I'm telling you. I mean. Check into the channel now because it's not going to be long. I'm, I'm going to have to check out because I can't make a coherent sentence. All right. Oh, it's going to get over this thick stuff. I can already see it. It's got a nice ramp and all the way home. And look at this profile. I mean, 
looks like I'm, I'm carrying a refined piece of hardware. Excellent tension. It's a dryer clip. Yeah. Same here. Really good tension. Can't shake that out of that pocket. And then I moved along quickly because this is my spot. This is where this knife is going to go. Yeah. I mean, you know, listen, I'm purging a lot of knives. And if you look, I say, you know, hey, it's never been carried, never been sharpened, blah, blah. And that's true because I talk about all these things with these pieces. And then most of them do not get in my pocket. Most of them don't. They just don't. I, I mean, I have way too many knives to just be throwing all these in my pocket. At one time, I used to throw every one of them in my pocket because I only bought knives that I liked. And so I bought it and I'd put it in my pocket. Well, since I started the channel, I still only buy knives that I like. Like, I like this. Um, I'm attracted to it. But there's a good chance that, you know, I'm attracted to a knife, but it's not going to get in my pocket. I mean, it's going to go straight in the purge box and... Even though I like it, uh, I checked it in, I gave it great reviews, I can only carry so many knives. So anyways, uh, this one, I think this is going to go in my pocket. Yeah, it's definitely going in the keep it bin, and I think it's going to go in my pocket. I like this one a lot. Uh, let's do safety checks on it before I forget. I forgot a couple of knives recently. Yeah, there's no contact in the blade there. Look at this backspacer. I like it. It's got a lanyard hole. Or a lanyard. Um, yeah, there's no contact through the backspacer. I'm lost again. Dimension, man. Can't get the tip, and the clip is wonderful. So, you know, tip's good, clip's good, and I'm confident I could put it in my pocket without, you know, reaching in and catching that blade in any way. Yeah, good stuff. Is it sharp? Yeah, I knew it was that kind of sharp. I could tell. Small, thin blade. Yeah, crazy sharp. I'm not even going to strop it. I'm just going to leave it just like it is. I mean, golly, this thing. Come on. Did I verify the name of it? I don't know, but let's check price and availability, and then I'll confirm that name. Okay. It is the Kube Barracuda. And this version in M390 is available on White Mountain Knives. Uh, list price is $165. And so if you use the code down below, DM10, you get 10% off of that. So what's that What's that put it down to? Like $149, something like that? Roughly, you know, just a, over $140. Bucks. And that's free shipping and no tax. So, I mean, compare that to some other places, that that number gets really competitive from White Mountain Knives pretty quickly. Um, but I'm going to put a link below. There's also a raw titanium version with silver hardware, exactly like this, but it has S30V steel. It's titanium, S30V, instead of the M390 and it's 107 and next day delivery from Amazon in my market. So S30V steel is pretty, pretty darn good, man. But it's only 107 bucks. And the weight, the size, the action, all of it would be exactly the same. You know, if I was on a budget knowing what I know about this knife, I would pick that one up in a, in a New York minute. Take my Texas time doing it, man. I'm just telling you. Oof. This thing is so good. Hey, I appreciate you watching. And uh, check it out.